I got shot. Jose and Rosalinda. Damn, I look like an alien. You ready, Timmy? Oh, he's so funny. Ew. What? Ew, what? She's everywhere. We. Now you know. Hey guys, what is up? This is Dan Rotos. And today I'm actually going to explain to you guys what happened a week. What is it? On Wednesday, June 9th, that Wednesday, and the following Sunday, I couldn't upload a video. I sort of had an issue. No, I did not get shot. That was a joke. But there was some sort of serious issue that happened. And that sort of got me thinking of a new series, which this is, will be called Storytime with Dan Rotost. Basically, situations or experiences I've had in the past, and I'll let you guys know what I learned from them and what you guys should learn from them. And yeah, it's gonna have an awesome intro. Story time! Story time with Dano Toast! Yeah! Uh, I might have lied. So, this basically, this is the reason why I missed those two episodes I should have uploaded, but I couldn't. So, that, this is the reason why, and I hope you guys enjoy the story. Okay, so this story takes place on July 9th which was a Wednesday. My friend asked me, hey, you wanna go play soccer? I'm like, hell yeah. So, I'm on my bike, I get to the game, go play for about five, 10 minutes. My heart was beating extremely fast. And I felt a lot of pressure, but it felt really weird. So I'm like, okay, I'm really out of shape then. It wouldn't go away. It was still there. I still felt it, and it's not a joke when it's in this region. So, you know, I just knew that it wasn't going away. It wasn't right, so I had to call an ambulance. So I go to the hospital, and they do tests. They tell me, you know what, it's fine, you're perfect. I'm like, that's fantastic. Why do I still feel this pain? Uh, and they say, you know, just relax, go home, rest. And so I wake up, and I still feel bad. And then I end up getting a call from my doctor saying that your heart is fine. We looked at x-ray, it's fine. But that actually showed my lungs, which wasn't so fine. I found out that day that I actually had something called a pneumothorax. I mean, yeah, the piece supposed to be there, son. It's basically when there's a tear or a hole in one of your lungs. I feel like fainting. And basically, it's like these weird blister things that occasionally, sometimes, you don't know when. It could be when I'm sitting down now. It could be when I'm running at my fastest speed. Anytime, which sucks. So basically, it, if it pops, it's going to make that hole, make that tear, and your lung basically collapses. It doesn't work. Imagine blowing a balloon with a hole in it. It doesn't work. It's not that great. And they said, you know, sometimes these holes, you know, they, they fix themselves up. So that's, that's awesome. So I do another x-ray. He checks in. He's like, you know what? This hole got bigger. Fantastic. Well, that means that I had two options. One, leave it and see if it can heal itself. Or two, get a chest tube. Basically, what that means is get a tube that goes to the lungs, inside the lungs, and helps get that extra air out. Fantastic. Yeah, good thing I was sitting down when he told me this. But too bad, a couple minutes later, when we asked him a bit more about it, and he was, he did a, he did a drawing, where is it? No kidding, he did a drawing like this. A freaking squiggle, a squiggle. Oh crap. Explaining that that's how it looks like. And I, you know, I remember like, oh, you know, I just want to get more information, you know. And then all of a sudden, boom, my eyes started going crazy. Hearing started to go. And I knew, I, I felt this before. I, I was about to faint. Bruh. And as soon as I felt better, I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling better. Time for surgery. Just knock me out. I don't care. You could like play with my body, do like, you know, I don't know, like, hello, my name is Dan You know what I mean? Just do that. I don't care. But knock me out. I do not want to know what's happening. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to give you this mild anesthetic. Yeah, man, that's, that's, hopefully it knocks me out. And I remember them putting on the mask. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get knocked out. I'm ready. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. And I end up not falling asleep and I'm awake for it. And I mean, it's a minor surgery, it's not huge, but I do remember, because I was awake, because you are putting a chest tube in my chest, in my lungs, I remember the doctor making this move, and that scared me, especially because I felt the pain of it. Basically, imagine this, and out of the corner of your eyes, you see this. Like, he literally, like, sh like he's shaking me, like, he's like, Psh. like, this, this was him. You're gonna die today! <laughs> But at the end of the day, it was good. They patched me up well. I really appreciate it. And honestly, the pain of it was immense. I could not lift up my left side of my body. Then I went to bed, and it was another story. It took me hours to fall asleep because I had to lie flat. Never lie on my back where I sleep. Guess what side I sleep on? Of course, it's the left side. Perfect. And just to move out of bed. The fact that you're lying down flat and then getting up, you get winded. 
and that's the smallest movement ever. It took me like 10 minutes to get out of bed. It took me so long, you know, to get here to go eat. It took me forever to get to the washroom. Like, it was ridiculous, a lot of pain. Eventually, I went to a specialist who looked at myself and said, you know what, now you're good. Now it's time to take out the lungs. <laughs> the lungs, oh my god. <laughs> we fixed your lungs, but now we're gonna take them out. <laughs> but now it's time to take out the tube and so you can get back to normal. So like, okay, and I'm like, wait, I'm gonna take it out here. He's like, go back there and, and sit. I'm like, oh hell not. Nah. He ends up doing it there. He takes out the patch, he starts taking out the stitches, and you know, I'm sitting there and I'm really nervous because it took about four guys to get it in. And it's gonna take one guy to take it out. I just remember him. And he just yanks it. And he just rips it. And he just pull it like he just pulled it once. And I felt it come out. Like it was a weird feeling. I don't know how to explain it. And at that moment, it's starting to faint. Bruh. And so I had to sit down and recover from that. And I am really, really a wussy. I don't know why I'm telling this story. At the end of the day, I have since recovered a bit more and I still have a bit of pain, but it's a lot better as you can see, I'm moving a lot. And I thought, yeah. That would be a good story to tell you. So that's the reason why I missed that week of videos. So hopefully from now on I'll continue my videos, continue doing what I need to do. Going through the, the hospital every single day, you see 50 people in these waiting rooms. And every single day they were different. There's not the same people there all the time. A lot of the times we look and we say, I want to be perfect, I want to be normal. I don't want this illness, I don't want to look like this, I don't want that. A lot of times we, th we think, you know, healthy people, to be healthy is normal. But going through this, I realized none of us are normal. We're all messed up. We all have some type of problem. But the fact is, normal is being messed up. What I'm trying to say is, be acceptive of who you are and be appreciative of what you have. Don't judge others because of their illness. That's their fight, that's their battle. We should help them with that. Final lesson is, enjoy your life because life is unpredictable. One second, it could change. I was on one high, having so much fun with my friends, to going, my life is in danger right now. The whole entire time I was there, I didn't care about how much money I had. I didn't care about my clothes, my laptop, my, any type of thing I possessed. I just care about the thing that matters. It's not about that promotion. It's not about the money you made. You know, it's about your family and the experiences and the memories and the things that you should have done. The, the dreams that you like get away. And that's what I'm trying to tell you today. I don't care if you're two, seventy, a hundred, a million years old. Please go after what you want to do. Be yourself, love yourself, and just enjoy today. Make sure that today you laugh and go to bed happy and wake up happy and excited for the day because you don't know what's going to happen. Why waste a day being sad when you can be happy that day? And, and, and I wish you all the best of health. And as well, I actually got a new account. It is an Instagram account. I don't know what I'm going to be taking pictures of. I don't have any posts right now. You know what? Let me take my first photo right now. Oh, that's horrendous. No filter can fix this. If you guys want to see that photo, make sure to check it out at Dano Toast on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, until next time, and take care. I think I'm ready. Humor Brony, this one's for you. Hey, I remember this one. Why am I floating? Oh, you have to let go. No, I'm taking my segue with me. You can take my freedom, but you can't take my segue. Here we go. Oh, yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, Bertha protected me. My head's gone.